In this video, I'll be walking you through the various different ways for updating your tests within Reflect. Um, so what I have here is a test that I've created previously. It's of an e-commerce site where I'm adding a product to the shopping cart. And there are two failures displayed in the latest test run, uh, one on step 12 here and one on step 17, the last step. So the first thing I'm gonna show you are changes that you can make uh, directly within a test run or the details of the test without having to rerun the test. So here what we can do is we can click on details for step 12 to see the nature of the failure. And what we'll see is that this is a visual validation failure, which basically means that the uh, image is more different than the threshold that we've set. So the threshold that we set here is 1.5% of pixels different. And in fact, uh, more than half of the pixels have changed of this uh, image. Now, what we're looking at here is an overlay of the expected image and the uh, actual image that we saw. The expected image is in this tab right here, which is a, you know, four t-shirts. And the actual image is right here, which is, is four sweatshirts. So that's why when we show the delta, you can see that there's quite a bit of difference, the red and the yellow signifying the differences between the two. So if uh, it were the case that um, this new image is the one that we want to use going forward. All we need to do is click accept changes here and it's going to use that new image, the actual uh, for subsequent tests. Step 17 has a similar issue where if we look at it here, um, the regular place is expecting is, is $18, but in fact it was $34. And so what we could do here is we could just click accept changes if we wanted to, to say that that is the price that we want to receive. Um, uh, or expect going forward. So I'll click on accept changes there and uh, that uh, step is now updated. Other things you can do in the uh, this view here includes um, deleting steps. So these three steps here, steps three, four, and five, I don't actually need it. It's navigating me to one part of the site and then kind of using that same navigation to go to a different part. So I could use the checkboxes next to this and click on the delete steps option to delete steps. You can also do things like change input values, add assertions, things like that. But I'll go ahead and save this. Um, now that this test is saved, I can actually go and rerun this uh, if I want, or if there's additional changes I need to make that require me to interact with the site, I can do what's called a re-recording. So re-recording is just basically going somewhere in the middle beginning or the end of the test and saying, there's some steps that I wanna add here. So let's actually re-record before we add a cart. So right before clicking on add a cart, I'm gonna hover above it and you'll see that there's this insert step option and I'm clicking on re-record here. So this is gonna take me back into the recording experience and basically fast forward me to that point that I had specified in the test. Now, you can actually set multiple re-recording breakpoints. So if you knew there were multiple places in the test that you wanted to modify, you can do that in a single viewing just by uh, hovering in between the steps again and choosing the add breakpoint option. So you can see once it gets to this step here, it now has gotten me back into recording mode. So I can actually interact with this site if I wanted to. I could do something like a text validation. Um, you know, add that here or, or really any sort of uh, interaction that I want to do. Um, for example, I could click on read more to see the full um, description here. And you can see that that click has, has now been added to the test. Um, we can also resume just to make sure that uh, all the rest of the steps are working. So we can click resume here. And actually the way I've set this up is that uh, one of these steps here, the step 15 should fail because the text is different. And so what we'll actually see here is a final example of updating a test, which is while watching a test running live, you have the opportunity to see failures in real time and track them. So you can see that there is a element cannot be found here. And uh, after it retries a certain amount of time, it gives me some options to fix up the test here. So what I can do is I could delete this step, I could mark it as optional, or I could uh, re-record it. So I'm just going to re-record it. So now we're before this step ever executes. And um, I'm just going to click on the uh, element again. So now that I've clicked on it, I can actually delete the steps that are unnecessary just by deleting them using the checkboxes in the delete option. And then we can finally resume just to make sure that the observe 
uh, works and execution is now completed. So we can save this here. So that is updating tests that's showing how you can update things both in re-recording flow or just by looking at the results of a test. Um, thanks for watching and happy testing.